So yes, a lovely member of the Lasting Movement, Lasting Love Movement asked about phones and how much it was triggering her to basically see her partner use her phone at all. Um, there's been a lot of trauma in the past around, you know, past relationships where there's been betrayal and lies and things that were being hidden from uh, her partner's phone. So there's this trauma there that keeps rushing back every time she's thinking about or seeing her partner use her phone today. And basically by the end of the, the post, you know, she, she said that they agreed to have an open, like an open door policy where they can go into each other's phones at any time and, um, and asked, you know, what's, what did everyone else thoughts about that? So I would love to talk about this too. I have lots of personal experience with my partner's phone being a trigger. Um, and this of course comes up with our clients in Let Love In as well. Um, so I'll start with sharing a little bit about myself. Um, wow. Yeah, so I was thinking about this topic for a straight week. You know, because I think she posted it just last Tuesday and I was like, wow, there have been so many ways that I used to be, I'm calling myself that shit crazy over my partner's phone. Um, if he would come, come to bed later at night, you know, he would be on his phone until he went to sleep. And sometimes he would wake me up when he, not on purpose, but I'd wake up when he came to bed and I'd see him on his phone. I'd try to look and see what is he doing? What does he do? And I would... I would kind of just secretly look. It was never anything, but I had this fear, like, you know, he'd already stayed up past me going to sleep. What's he doing? What's he doing in his phone? Who's he texting? Who's that? It's just crazy making. Um, now I never had any specific trauma regarding any um, previous partner's phones, but I was seriously caught up in the fear that he would abandon me, find someone better than me. Of course, all of this is my trauma of not being good enough, being abandoned, being rejected, being hurt. And I projected a lot of that onto his phone. And so now where we're at is we never established this, but we do have an open door policy with our phones. You know, we have each other's fingerprints, or I guess we don't anymore. Now it's the face thing, but we have each other's codes and we can get into each other's phones whenever. Um, I used to sneakily try to see who he was texting, try to like read through it really quick, like anything, you name it. I, the trust was not there and not because he wasn't trustworthy because I didn't trust that I was worthy enough for him to stay or to not cheat or to not look at other things that would take him away from our relationship. Yeah. There was lots of discussion about porn in this question or looking at other women or right and that's going to be a whole loaded topic and I don't think we'll ever come to agreement with this right so the overall question is you know whatever's happening on your partner's phone is it really impacting your relationship so we could be in this habit of looking and checking and seeing and right so I might see an unknown number in my partner's text message inbox. So if I see that, what's, what do I do next, right? If I just see that, then I have this information. And what do I do with this information? I could either be like, all right, whatever, cool. There's, that's it's fine. There's a random number that he's talking to. In the past, I would have been like, who is that? I got to see it. I got to look. I got to see, you know, I think about for days and days and days, the next week, the next week, the next week, and be like, is that number popping up again? But if you see an unknown number, you know, how is that going to help you? You're probably going to take the next step eventually and look at who it is and you'll see conversation. And then maybe it's a conversation that there's no real clarity or answers. So you might deep, dig deeper and go to the email, right? And there's no, nothing good that comes from really, there is really nothing productive that comes from being able to search through each other's phones when it comes from an intention of like, oh, are you going to be totally honest with me about what you're doing outside of a relationship? I truly believe that. And once I started to learn to trust myself and like really understand my worthiness, 
and also trust that, yeah, I am good enough to be with, you know, for him to be with me as a lifelong partner. It was really an addiction, like the addiction to knowing, the addiction to having any sort of information I can hang on to that would prove that he would leave me. That was an addiction. So the more that I held back, that I kind of modulated the, this fear that would come up, the easier and easier it was to not look. And even if I see something that could be potentially suspicious now, um, it doesn't matter. The question is, is it impacting your relationship? Is your relation, like if you took away all of those things, all of those pieces of information that you get, oh, my partner takes his phone to the bathroom. Oh, my partner takes, uh, my partner answers their phone in the middle of the night. If you didn't have any of that information, like if you put all of that aside and it didn't exist, how is your relationship? What's the reality? Because I'm guessing that the triggers that are coming from the phone are not based on reality. Um, unless you're in an abusive, unhealthy relationship, which, you know, I mostly my audience, my crowd, you are all in healthy relationships. You're just bringing your trauma in. So what's actually going on in your relationship? Is your partner reliable? Is your partner showing you love? Is your partner um, trying to be close to you? What's what's going on with you? Are you, is your heart open? Are you able to be intimate? Are you able to connect? Are you able to trust yourself? Are you able to believe your partner when they say that they love you or they adore you or that they want to be with you? If you took away all of the other information, the other stimuli, what's, what's happening and feel that in your body. Like how freeing is that? So yeah, okay, maybe a year ago or so, maybe a year ago or so, I asked to borrow my, my partner's phone and he was like, mm, what? no, let me see something first. Okay, so he closed out of a tab he didn't want me to see. And we talked about it because I was like, what is it? What's there? And it, it, it is what it is. Like, I didn't need to know. And when I did know, it, it's still like, okay, we're still in this amazing relationship nothing that he does actually is proving anymore, proving anymore that things aren't, uh, that he's going to leave or that I'm not worthy of his love. So I don't find any positive, any, uh, uh, unless you're in this extremely urgent anxious, unstable, emotional place. The only thing that kind of this open door policy serves is a band-aid at the moment until you heal your trauma, um, which is fine. If you need that, like if you absolutely need that, I think it's okay to have that temporarily um, as long as it's not ruining your relationship, but it won't actually solve what you, it won't actually solve what's going on underneath that you don't feel worthy enough for, for your partner not to cheat on you or find other women attractive. Your partner is gonna find other women or men, whatever, other women or whoever they're into attractive for humans. So you actually have to get to a place where, place where you don't feel threatened by that. And someone shared like, oh, there's research that watching porn does create more disconnection. Okay, so there might be research, but is that true of your relationship, right? Or is there just a fear that something that other people have said will impact negatively your relationship is a fear that you're afraid that that's going to happen to you. It's like hearing about your friend who got divorced and then you're like, oh no, am I going to get divorced now? Right? It's, you have to be so secure in yourself and then inevitably your relationship that you can also separate this is what's going on. Like this is he right here, right now between me and my partner and inside of me, this is what's happening. We are actually in this healthy, loving, connected relationship, right? That's here. And all of that stuff out there is the trauma is the stuff that's triggering my old trauma. So I hope that was clear. And I, I also want to say 
through all of this that if you're struggling with this, it's not your fault. This triggering of old trauma, it's not something you can consciously decide not to be triggered about. It's not a mindset thing. You can't just change your thoughts and poof, it's gone. There are a lot of messages out there that will tell you that. And it makes you feel more damaged. It makes you feel more broken. Like, why can't I just change? Why do I keep freaking out about this? When you're being triggered from past trauma, like it could be a phone beep. It could just be a text message beep. It's not even your partner's phone, but your partner's in the room, right? And you're already hijacked back into the trauma. Who's texting him? Who's doing this, right? Um, it happens like this, that trigger. And it happens in a different part of your brain than you can rationalize or logically think about or decide or verbalize. So it's not your fault that you can't change it. But if this is stemming from past trauma, you have to heal that trauma from your body. You have to rewire your nervous system to not get hijacked in fear to a beep, to a scream, to your partner doing something with their phone. Because that's gonna, it's going to, it's going to put a wall between you that you can't trust them. And the sad thing about that is that it's not even about them, right? It's about you not being able to trust yourself, not being able to trust yourself that you are amazing enough for your partner to be 100% dedicated to you. Um, if you have been betrayed by your partner, then you have to think about, okay, in what way did they betray me? Was this kind of like a little white lie? And if it was, was it because I've been so controlling that I couldn't give them the space to tell them, the, tell me the truth? Um, if it was a bigger betrayal, a bigger lie, then you still have to trust yourself. You still have to trust that you will know whatever it is that you need to know about what your partner is doing without snooping, without going crazy over, without like spending all this emotional energy stressing you out, weakening your immune system about it, you have to trust that you will do whatever you need to do when you need to do it. Okay, so for example, if my partner is talking to some other woman right now, I'll find out. I'll find out when I need to. But if I try to figure that out every single moment of every day and try to keep finding evidence, um, what's that thing in our brain called the something RAS, I forgot what it stands for. But basically it's like, if you're shopping for a car, you're gonna start looking at cars and then you're gonna start noticing cars more. And then you're gonna start seeing cars everywhere. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna see that evidence. You're gonna see the text message. You're gonna see the, uh, the, the, look in it, the look in their eye that, oh, they're hiding something. You're gonna make something out of nothing. And you're gonna make something out of everything. So it's really best that you, you don't make a thing of the phone at all and that you break this addiction to knowing and finding the evidence. You have to have some trust in yourself and maybe in the universe if you're into that, that you will know what you need to know when you need to know it. And that everything else is you trying to control yourself from getting hurt again and your trauma triggering you and trying to control you and your nervous system, your survival system hijacking you all the time. And just imagine what that does to your body all the time. Danger, 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 threat, threat, threat um, creates a lot of stress. It increases cortisol, it weakens your immune system. It makes people sick to the point where there's not even a medical diagnosis and they're feeling sick all the time. So do this for yourself. Um, find a way to be okay with letting go of this addiction. And if that means healing your trauma and rewiring your nervous system, then send me a message if you're ready to do that. Cause that's what my, my let love in program helps you with. It will help you connect your body in a way where you're actually accessing and releasing the trauma that is making you on high alert for the phone and for everything else right now. Um, and there is no other way to access it other than connecting to your body through movement. There is no amount of talking. There is no amount of affirmations, journaling. You can say over and over in your head, 
My partner is not cheating on me. My partner is not looking at other women. My right. You can say that you don't believe it. If you're doing this, if you're not secure in yourself in your relationship, no, you don't believe those affirmations. And again, that's not your fault. It's just that when you say those affirmations, you're speaking to your, your prefrontal cortex and your trauma is stored in your amygdala and hippocampus. And the only way to access those parts of the brain and the body, again, body movement. So send me a message if you are ready to heal your trauma and rewire your nervous system and stop letting these thoughts and fears take over your life and your real chance at healthy, lasting love. Um, we can have a chat, no, no obligation. Uh, see if the program is a good fit for you, talk details. And, um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments in the video about this topic. I know it's very touchy, um, it's very sensitive, but I'm telling you, I was that shit crazy over this. And it's, it's not there. It's, it's not there anymore because I healed my trauma and rewired my nervous system too. All right. So thanks so much for joining. And I hope you know that you deserve to be able to let healthy, lasting love in. Bye-bye.